North Guji Museum, Mihal, Montalbert. My name is Yvonne Corcoran Loftus, the museum curator. Michael Davitt was one of Ireland's greatest patriots and the most important international Irishman of the 19th century. This virtual tour explores his life and legacy. I hope you enjoy it. The story of Michael Davitt, this remarkable man, begins in 1846, just a stone's throw from the building we're in, the 300-year-old penal church in which Michael was baptised and in which his parents were married. So the collection really has come home. 1846, of course, was during the Great Famine, not a great start in life. His father Martin, his mother Catherine, and the family managed to get through the famine. Martin worked as an overseer on a roads project, for example, for a while. He also traveled to England as an agricultural laborer. But 1850 dawned, the rent had yet again increased, and the family were evicted. Upon the wall, family photographs, and in the cabinet, family photographs of that time. The eviction, when Michael was four and a half, meant they had to emigrate. And they emigrated via Dublin and Liverpool to a place called Haslingdon, which is north of Manchester. And here we have the house that they stayed in, in Haslingdon. Now, in this first cabinet here, in the picture of Michael Davis, with his mother, Catherine Davitt. She was an Ekeelty and she was born in the nearby village of Terlow up the road. Unfortunately, we have no picture of Martin, his father. We have a picture here of Mary, his sister, Sabina, and then Anne and Mary. Now, these pictures were taken when they were over in America. That's why they're finely dressed. We have a picture here of his first employers, the Cockcrofts, and then this is the building here. There's a copy here of his maths book. At the age of nine, Michael is working full-time in a cotton factory, full time being 12 hours. He had lied about his age so he could work full time. By the age of 11, Michael, still working in a place called Stelfox's Mill, lost his right arm when he tried to retrieve an item in the machinery. A personal tragedy for Michael, of course, but it enabled then a change of life. We would never have heard of Michael Davitt if he hadn't lost the arm. He was taken in by a Methodist preacher and allowed to have the education that he was so ready and able for. He also studied in a place called the Mechanics Institute where he learned about his Irish history and where we think he came into contact with the IRB the Irish Republican Brotherhood, commonly known as the Fenians. Michael took on that Fenian cause again very readily. Indeed, by the age of 19, he had joined them. By the age of 22 or 23, Michael was a centre of the IRB. A centre would have, would have up to 100 men reporting to him, so a major figure. He's also the main gun runner for the north of England and Scotland. And you'll see on the wall behind me the sort of munition that Michael was shipping back to Ireland. It's a Lee Enfield rifle. I'm reliably informed if you try to fire that particular weapon, you take your shoulder off as the stock is on the wrong way around. 1870 saw Michael at Paddington Station waiting for a consignment of pistols. He had been followed by the police uh, and he was duly arrested. Sentenced to 15 years penal servitude. 
and most of it in Dartmoor Prison, where he would be asked to break rocks or to drag carts full of rocks uh, or to unpick oakum, which is ship's cable. And because he only had the one arm, most of that he did with his teeth. He'd served seven and a half years before an amnesty meant that he could be released on what we call a ticket of leave. A ticket of leave would be a parole, if you like, released on good behaviour. 